Okay, so today I want to talk about how to build multi multilingual websites or apps or web apps. Whether you're doing this inside of Cordova, you're doing it as a, a web app, a progressive web app, or you just want to make your website dynamically multilingual. This is an approach that you can take. So in my HTML, if you notice default documents when you're using brackets or Sublime or VS Code, whatever it is you're using, if you've got a template, very often you've got this lang attribute up inside the HTML. Now, this is meant to represent the fact that the content on your page is in the language English. Or if you had German, you'd put DE or so on. So we're specifying what the language is. Now, we can use that as the default for the page to say my default language for all of my content is going to be English but I don't have to have everything on my page be English. I can create content that is English. So I've got English Canadian here. I've got German without a country. Just this is the, uh, the canonical uh, language itself, DE, German, Deutsch, or French Canadian. So you can specify a language or a language in a country using one of these ISO codes. Now, I have all three of them appearing on the page. Normally what you would do is you would show one or the other of this. Sometimes you'll have some content that's in another language you want to display all your default plus a little bit of something else, but we can choose whether or not we show any one of these. Now all I did was I highlighted in blue dynamically. I figured out, okay, what's the browser in my uh, browser language? And that's what I'm writing out down here. So my browser, this was the language that it was set to, E-N-U-S, so English U.S. Um, then I looked inside of my data file to find, you know, where can I find a, a match for this? And this is the one that it found. Um, so it's going to match with this one, and it highlighted this. It just took the, the E-N portion of this to match and highlight this div. All right, so how do we change the content? You'll notice here in all of my buttons, it says default, but it doesn't say default over here. So step one is to create a structure for all of your language. So this is just one sample. You don't have to use exactly this. This is just a simple example that I built. I have a variable. Now I could have an external JavaScript file that I'm loading that has all of my language strings, anywhere I'm going to put text on the page, in an anchor, on a button, a paragraph of text, whatever it is, anywhere I've got content, that's going to go inside this file. So I'm creating an object called languages. Inside of that, I've got one for each language. I don't have en-ca or fr-fr. I could. I could add the country in there. I could make multiple language files depending on whether it's um, English from the UK or English from the US or English from Australia, maybe there's going to be some labels that change at some point. But most of the time, you're going to have just the language itself. Inside my language object, I have a container called strings. This object holds all the data. So BTN yes, BTN no. Those are going to be labels that I look for in my HTML. And you'll see I've got the same labels regardless of which language it is. Now, button yes and no, those are sort of English labels. It doesn't matter that those are English labels. It's just that's what I understand as I'm developing. I'm using English. I'm thinking in English. I'm writing it in English. Up here, BTN yes and no. You can see I've got a data property. This word right here doesn't matter as much as long as you're consistent with whatever it is. But those labels will match up with these labels. And then we get the text from here. So I've got the English, the French, the German. Those labels are going to be put onto the page based on whatever language I've got on the containing div. So I'm, with my JavaScript, I'm going to look for lang attributes inside of the body. Whenever I find a lang attribute, I'm going to find the matching language code inside my languages object, then I'm going to find all the matching data keys. And for every data key that I find, I'm going to replace this text with one of these values. Now, I don't have to write the word default everywhere. If you wanted, you could just put all the English text inside of here. And then 
replace it as needed. So that way, if the script failed for some reason, you would have actual content. So this could be an actual label. So you see where we're going. We've got some content that loads, and then the script should be able to very quickly, almost instantaneously, replace all those labels with whatever comes out of our data file. Whether this is being loaded by JSON, or it's an external JavaScript file, either way, we're going to get that content displayed here. So let's take a quick look at the script. My DOM content loaded. I'm looking inside of my HTML tag for anything that's got a lang attribute. I'm saving that in a variable called zones, and then I'm passing that over to my second function. This function will take all these different language containers. I loop through them, and for each container, so the container will be each one of the attributes. I get the lang from the div. That's going to tell me the locale. So the locale is going to be ENCA, DE, or FRCA, one of those three. So looping through those, I'm getting each of those values. I'm going to loop through each one. And for every data key that I find, so this is lo looping through all of the um, elements inside of this div. I'm looking for things that have data key inside of that div. Scrolling quickly back up here, we've got data key. So I'm looking for the data key inside of something that's got lang. That's what we're doing. Close this so less scrolling. There we go. So find all of the things with data keys. Loop through every one of them. For each one of the things that have a data key, we're going to get the actual value from the data key. And then we're going to take the first two characters. Because in my data, I only had the en, the fr, the de. I was just keeping it at the language. So that's why I'm extracting just the first two characters of the value. Just in case, like here, FRCA. So I'm saying I don't need this part right here. I just need the language because that's all I have in my data file. OK, so with that lang, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my lang data object. That was the external data file. I'm going to go to the languages object, look for the matching language. So whatever the first two characters were, get the matching language, and then the property called strings, look for key, which is the value from data key. So there we go. We've got the matching values. Key is going to be BTN yes, BTN no. This is going to be the ENFRDE. So we extract the actual value, and that's what gets placed in here as the brand new text content. OK, now just one other side note. If you want to have a default language when this loads, well, that's what these comments down here are, these uh, console.log statements that I've got. I'm doing this at the very beginning. Find locale match. I want to know what is the browser default value. So we found it out down here. I wrote it out, the ENUS. I got that by going to the navigator object in the browser that's built into every browser. There's a property called language. And this will return to me something like this, ENUS. The new international object that was added to browsers a few years ago, uh, you may want to check to see if this exists in your, in your script. But if it does exist, there's a method called get canonical locales. This is going to give you just the language portion, the EN, FR, DE, and so on. This gives you just that two-letter string. So I want to get that from whatever the default is. If that happens, I can use that. And down here, what I'm doing is I'm finding the matching one so that I can highlight in blue the matching one. So my find locale match, I return the matching lang. right here. So find locale match. I'm getting the EN portion coming back. Then I'm going to go to HTML, find the thing that starts with 
the EN, the FR, the DE, whatever my browser language is set to, the default language for my user who's looking at my web page right now is EN, English. So I'm going to add the CSS class name Langmatch. That's why this one got the blue background because up here in my CSS, so I have the blue background here placed inside of this div simply because I had a matching. The first two letters here, EN, matched with the language from my data inside this script right here. There it is, there's the EN. So these scripts are being loaded inside of this element and this element is being used through the query selector and I'm taking this div and I'm highlighting it with blue. I'm adding the CSS class. Just like if I went in here, I could add the class Langmatch like that. There we go. Now this one's highlighted in blue as well. So that's what we're dynamically doing is we're looking for this value and we're putting it on the one that matches. Now we could, if we wanted, change this so that we did display block, not just blue or not changing the background color, but changing it to display block. And then we could come up here and say, you know what? Anything that's a div that's got a lang attribute. So anything that's a div which has a lang attribute, by default, I'm going to make this display none. Now, oh, I'm not getting the um, div showing up because of specificity. This has got a higher specificity than this one. So I'm going to say div lang that has the class this. That way we've definitely got a higher specificity. There, we can see right here, 0, 2, 1. That's got a higher specificity than this one, 0, 1, 1. All right, and there it is. Only the default one is showing up in my browser, just in case you want to do that. Okay, and that's it. That is how you can create a multilingual version of your website by putting the strings into some external data that you then load and match against the Lang attributes that you put inside of your HTML. All right, and that's everything. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will leave a link to the code gist inside of the description. And as always, thanks for watching.